Uh, and now we're going to hear more auspiciously from a federal roadmap that Deloitte's been implementing at their clients. So um, Kyle Williams and Fabio Chavarria are going to speak on how they've approached connecting SDLC, ALM, Agile, and DevOps solutions uh, within these federal environments. So. All right, so I think what you'll find uh, for our presentation is, uh, and Fabio will be joining here in me in a second, um, but uh, definitely a different slant, like Mick mentioned. We're in the federal space. Um, for those that are, do work the government, I think you'll see some common trends in terms of uh, uh, issues and hurdles that we have to overcome working in the government. Um, for those in the commercial space, hopefully it's somewhat enlightening for you and hopefully not too frustrating. Um, so like Mick said, we're going to walk you through what is kind of our roadmap for how we uh, used uh, TaskTop to centralize data uh, for our uh, given uh, client, for our client. So my name is Kyle Williams. I've uh, been at Deloitte for six years in the health tech offering. Uh, my background is in health IT, obviously. I was a biomedical engineering major at uh, UVA. Um, and yeah, big. Uh, I grew up in the DC area, so I'm a local um, and huge, huge avid Nats fan. Um, yeah. Fabio? Uh, so my name is uh, Fabio Chavaria. Um, originally from New York, but made my trip over here to DC. Uh, stayed here. Um, been with Deloitte Consulting for about four and a half years. Um, my role mainly um, are um, administering the IBM Jazz tool, which we'll speak about a little bit, as well as making connections through TaskTop um, sync over um, between systems, um, and mostly, mostly on the configuration side, but also with configuration, uh, you do need to have that process um, understanding, um, meeting with stakeholders to really getting to understand um, what, what connections you need to make to make the tools uh, talk to each other. Yeah, and I should mention, uh, so I'm the process and tool support lead, like the slide says. Um, so like Fabio mentioned, it, it deals a lot with process re-engineering for the client um, and then implementing the tools and configuring them to meet those processes. Um, so we've been doing that for several years, primarily using IBM Jazz. Um, but as you'll see as we tell the story, um, there became a, a clear need for to use TaskTop moving forward. Um, so this is what we're going to walk through today. We're going to give you some background in terms of the landscape that we're, we're working with in terms of uh, our client environment. Uh, Fabio is going to talk to you about some of the pain points we experienced. Uh, we're then going to talk to you about TaskTop Sync. Um, I think it was Mark who mentioned being embarrassed last year talking about TaskTop Sync. And the government, year behind is not too bad. Um, so we're going to talk about the initial state that we had. Um, what we ended up doing in terms of the synchronization, some of the success we had, some of the challenges that we experienced. And then we're going to talk about, we just recently actually installed TaskTop Integration Hub, so we're really excited about that. We had tested out in the eval environment. We've gone through all the trainings and whatnot, but we're really excited to get those connections set up. And then we're going to talk a little about lessons learned. And if you have questions throughout, feel free to jump in. We kind of plan to have questions at the end, so we might be a little short, um, but we'll see. All right, so we provide some context. Um, so. Our client is a large federal agency, um, uh, very large. Um, so they're, they're uh, responsible for multiple program offices. Um, those program office, offices are responsible for dozens of products. Um, so if you think about it from a, a little bit different than some of the other people have talked where everything is kind of internal, the government's responsible for kind of the PMO and oversight of those, of those products. Um, and so under each of, the, each of those programs, you might have dozens upon dozens of vendors. Um, so the stakeholders um, and the number of, of moving parts is, is somewhat um, difficult and complex. Um, so I've been working with this given uh, clients way back in 2013. When I came in, it was actually a new program office. They had just started. So as you can imagine, their processes were essentially non-existent. Um, they did not have tools of any nature. They were using Excel spreadsheets to manage their requirements using email, Outlook, you know, the kind of the horror story um, you would sometimes see. Um, so we, get, we recommended that they do IBM Jazz, um, we, multitude of reasons. We've given presentations on that before. Um, but 2013 to 2015, we essentially got them stood up in that. Uh, we got them managing their requirements and doors next gen. We got them, some teams use Agile. Our team internally uses Agile. It's been a bit of a struggle culturally to get the government to move from waterfall to Agile, but we've, been, we've had pockets of success, um, especially with the more of the vendors. Um, and then we've uh, got their test processes stood up, and we do the reporting. And we, so we've done the whole SDLC with this, pretty much starting from nothing and then kind of where we are today. 
So it was about in 2015 when we first uh, reached out to Mick, um, where we identified TaskTop as a potential integration need for our, our teams. Um, we had a few legacy programs that were brought in, so teams that had already been operating their own tools. Um, the testing team especially was adamant that they wanted to do HPA LM. It was their best of breed tool, and so they wanted to use that to continue managing their requirements and defects and whatnot. The government at that time had invested in IBM Jazz. They weren't willing to you know, make, make the change, so we identified TaskTop as a potential solution to make, to make that connection. Um, later that year, there was a pretty seismic shift in our program office. Um, essentially, we went from a program office, like I mentioned, dozens of small vendors to uh, a very, very large vendor. Um, that uh, you know, it was, it was it was a quite large commercial firm that came in, um, significant investment from the government, and so they kind of put a whole new slant on how our program office was approaching this. And we they came in with their own tools and their own processes, and we realized, hey, TaskTop, this is the perfect solution because we're going to be able to, to connect this government entity that's already kind of established their processes over the last several years, and this commercial organization that has decades of experience with their processes. Um, and as, as we'll talk through, those obviously don't always align. So that was 2015, 2016, um, we did a proof of concept. And don't get, <laughs> I know TaskTop might be a little wary of this timeline, you know, it's years. You know, there are lots of hurdles you had to overcome. Um, TaskTop was installed uh, uh, on a uh, cloud environment. We had to work through a lot of contractual uh, hurdles to overcome that. So as anyone who's taken the TaskTop training, you can create a connection in a day. It's all the other things that, on the government side that we had to, you know, the cyber, all the other things that we had to overcome um, that really caused this to be months, it caused it to be years instead of months. So in 2016, we created a sandbox. Um, and then into, uh, later in that year, we, we turned the switch and, and went live in prod, and data started flowing back and forth between this commercial entity and the government, or the commercial vendor and the government. Uh, in, in 2017, we identified, we essentially iterated on this, this uh, environment for a while, um, implemented the configuration changes later that there, and in 2018, we're now targeting transitioning to uh, TaskTop uh, Integration Hub, and we'll kind of get into the reasons for that and kind of what our goals um, are for that effort. Okay. Um, all right, so Kyle briefly mentioned some of the pain points or some of the reasons why we needed to connect systems together. Um, some of the big things that um, were raised while um, we had two separate systems, um, real-time ti collaboration um, was not possible. Um, so you had you know, your vendor in one tool, you had the government in a separate tool. Um, we would have phone calls where you know, they would have defect um, phone calls to, to triage defects. Um, everyone had a different report, or you know, maybe they, they ended up combining reports before the meeting, you know, 2 p.m. meeting, everyone had to send their updates by one. Um, some people didn't get their important defects in by the two o'clock meeting. Um, so there was just kind of, you know, not, there was no synchronization between the teams, um, and you know, the source of truth was not always accurate when you were pulling your, your information. Um, so that was the, one of the main reasons was uh, to ensure that you know, the collaboration was there, everyone was on the same um, sheet of music, um, and so that you know, once you updated something in one tool, you know, that, that didn't necessarily get updated in the other tool um, before we made our integration, um, but after, you know, that, that was one of the big pieces there. Um, the second piece here is uh, data. So we really had data um, all over the place. And not only just the physical data, um, our, our vernacular was different. So a defect, what you define as a defect on your side might be different than what we define on our, on our side. Um, and so the tools weren't really enforcing this. Um, so on the government side, you know, a, a, they had different severities. So something that was critical might be a SEV 1, 2 on the government side. On the vendor side, they might have just a SEV 1. Um, on, the, on the vendor side, they had 1 through f uh, 5. Government side, they had 1 through 4. So simple things um, of metadata didn't allow um, the, the, the teams to kind of coordinate. Um, so speaking the same language was important, um, and the tools ended up you know, it not allowing this to, to occur. Once we made the connections, it enforced that uh, between the two tools or the two teams. Um, and then the last piece was the result of this confusion um, was that reports were all over the place. So we had two different teams sending in reports. Um, their severities were different. 
Um, the government really didn't, didn't know which, which to believe, what was actually a high severity, what was a low severity. Um, so there was just confusion on reporting. Um, there'd be two different reports sent through, or sometimes the reports you know, came in at different times. Um, so there was just confusion about you know, what was the source of truth, when, you know, wh which, which uh, report should you, should you be looking at. Um, so reporting was a big piece there um, that, that kind of caused heartache. All right, so now we'll kind of get into what we actually did um, starting in 2016. Um, so this was kind of our initial state. Um, I think a big uh, shift in terms of some of the previous presentations, as we mentioned, IBM Jazz was kind of our central hub. That's what we control. We're admins of that tool, and that's where, um, as I say in the first bullet, the government really said, OK, this is where we're going to work. We, there have been a few different tools proposed. They decided to go with IBM Jazz. Um, these other tools that we have, we're stakeholders for, we, have, we don't necessarily have control over these. Some of these are vendor tools, like this instance, HPALM. Uh, CA Clarity um, was used for resource management schedules. It was a different group that had access to that, that controlled that. Um, but there was data in there that we, the government needed access to. Um, and Serene RM for requirements and uh, incidents in, in remedy. So each of these separate tools were completely separated. They were, they were generating their own reports. Um, as Fabio kind of already mentioned, um, there were definitely instances where the vendor would submit a, a defect report of their instance of HPALM, and it would have X number of, of defects in it. And these are reports going up to secretary level sometimes. Um, and then we generate a report at IBM Jazz, and it would have X plus 200. And we'd have to figure out the diff. And then down, downstream of communications, it was like, oh, you guys wanted all the defects. We, we were told you only wanted seven ones and twos, right? So it was causing some major confusion at senior leadership level um, in terms of what is actually the source of truth? What, it, what, it, what, are the, what is the true metrics that we should be pulling? So as you can imagine, that was causing a huge amount of confusion. Um, this led to eventually the uh, program office you know, making this decision that, hey, we got we to move forward with this task top solution. We need to integrate these tools. Um, and part of that, and I'll get to this in the next slide, it fixed your slides, you know, sometimes task top was the solution, sometimes it wasn't. So we'll kind of talk through um, why we made the decisions that we did. So our approach to this whole effort, um, and we've, I think a few different people have kind of talked about this, and Jeff uh, talking about the, the processes being a, kind of a, um, you needing to get all the vernacular down beforehand. So this is a huge, huge effort, and this is, besides some of the, the federal government hurdles that we had to overcome, getting the two massive organizations with, you know, sometimes you get two leadership, you know, two teams in the room, one from the vendor, one from the government, and there'd be hundreds of years of experience. They had a certain way they managed defects. The, the, the government had one way, the vendor had another. So getting them to speak the same language and make, make, make common ground was a huge effort. Um, this became a weekly call. It's still a weekly call. This has been a, <laughs> a weekly call that we've had for going on four years now. Um, so getting them to collaborate um, and, and track the same, the same data was a huge effort. To be honest, by the time we went live, we were probably only 50% of the way there. Um, we made huge hurdles in terms of you know, even just common things like what, what is an incident? There were different definitions, right? What, my always favorite is what's an issue? Like the government had a totally separate definition of what's an issue than the vendor. Um, so you know, making common ground on there, still a struggle today. But at least we made progress with the help of TaskTop. I think they provided some templates. And we, we documented what are all the work items that we need to think, what are the attributes, what are the numeration values associated with attributes, so we could kind of at least try to get to a common ground. So once we, made, once we defined that, we then said, OK, what's gonna go, what are we going to try to target with TaskTop Sync? What are we just going to simply migrate? And I've highlighted these four things over to the right here, because in a way, we did it four different ways. The top one, we, used, we connected TaskTop. The government, it was a smaller testing team. They said, you know what, now that we've, we've seen what Jazz can do, we're just going to migrate. So we migrated them all over. The vendor, we connected with TaskTop. So that's one that we, we synced all the defects, um, the requirements, CRs. Those are things that we even running today. So that's a, that's a syn synchronization that we established. BMC and Remedy, that's one that we're targeting in the near future. We're hopeful that we can get that. Um, several complications in terms of traversing uh, government networks. Um, but we're hoping that's a, that's a, right now it's a, essentially a manual ingest for us on a daily process, which you can imagine when dealing with thousands of incidents is a huge, huge issue. So we're really eager to start working with the TaskTop team 
um, to get that established. And then Serena, um, those are where our requirements come in. Um, it's we made the determination that a sync wasn't necessarily needed there because really the updates were coming in a couple times a year. So having daily sync was, uh, it just wasn't, it didn't make sense for, our, for us. Um, so this was our approach, starting getting people speaking on this common language, like I said, we didn't quite get there. Then, then deciding which approach we're gonna take and then implementing. Um, so this is our, our initial synchronization process. Um, so it was, a, it was a tremendous success once we turned it on in 2016. Um, this was about a year after the, the big shift was in, uh, in our program office in terms of the scope and the visibility that it was receiving. So this was a huge success when we eventually got the team, the government and vendor to collaborate on a common set of defects and requirements. Um, I think one of the cool things about this is it significantly increased the use of the IBM Jazz tool suite. Um, I, like we said, we're admins, so we look at the utilization reports and our tools. Um, before this sync was implemented, um, people were really only logging into Jazz to CCBs, um, occasionally checking, you know, if they're a Scrum Master like myself, you know, going in, looking, you know, you had your diehard users that had set things that needed to do the tool. Once the sync started to occur, you had senior leadership going in and being like, oh, like, there's a dashboard that I can use now. There's a real-time data in this tool that is important to me. So our utilization skyrocketed. We went from... I think about a couple dozens of you know, people in there a day to, we had 1,200 users, you know, people just constantly logging in and, and using our tool. Um, so we've, we've kind of baselined since then, but it was really exciting when we, when we turned this on to see the, the rapid increase of, of utilization. It really became, you know, IBM Jazz was still kind of this weird thing, and now it's like a critical, along with TaskTop, a critical component of our, our tooling infrastructure. Um, I'll try to walk through this. Um, I, I was really jealous of Integration Hub where they have the mapping, um, so I was creating this by myself. Um, so I'm really eager to get, get to that point where we can just pull that. Um, but essentially, there's, there's two critical components I'm showing here. One is access, and one is the, the, who owns the tools. Um, so this was a major issue for the government initially, is allowing vendors to come in and see their data, um, and which is why we created this kind of unusual task top sync that did DNG to DNG and RTC to RTC. I remember when we first started talking to this with Big Jeff, he was like, why, why would you want to do that? And the, the primary reason is, is because of the government was a little iffy on you know, whether they were okay with the vendor seeing that. Um, so therefore, we allowed the government to keep on working in their existing repositories. Um, when they wanted something pushed the, the, the vendor, there was a trigger set up, it would push it into this um, vendor type of uh, repository, and then those there were triggers with the other task stop sync that would push it into the HPA LM. So it was kind of a not ideal uh, process. Um, the flow wasn't that efficient, but it was synchronization, and we were ecstatic about it. Um, I think another thing, and I put this as a success, success, is that it really highlighted discrepancies in the process. You could argue that's a challenge, but for me, it really highlighted to the government and the vendors, once they were in this this middle space, the government was pushing attributes into here, and the vendor was pushing attributes in here that they didn't, weren't using. And once they saw that, you know, it was kind of a tug of war, once they saw that the vendor had all these additional attributes, the government was like, oh, it, this makes sense. Like this, having this additional category field, we could use that. So it kind of enabled, it kind of was a forcing function to not allow them to find common ground. Um, and, and over time, it kind of it, it helped us improve the overall process. Um, the scope of this was initially just limited to requirements and defects. Um, and like I mentioned, it was, it was primarily a, this kind of unusual setup was primarily due to, to um, visibility controls. Um, the primary challenge of this was traceability. Um, there was essentially, we were creating duplication within the same instance of Jazz. Um, so you have a defect with three different IDs, um, which wasn't ideal. And the government testing teams were uh, creating test events and, and running their, executing their tests in RTC, and the vendor uh, was doing it in HP. Um, so it made it a little difficult. It's kind of apples to oranges in terms of if they want, the government wanted to pull um, a report. And you'll notice that uh, the government also doesn't have access to the vendor. So the, the bottom right corner doesn't exist, and that kind of was some of the, the you know, challenges that the government had to overcome and the fact that they didn't have still didn't have full visibility into uh, the vendor space. So after we uh, worked on that for about a year, the, the main, you'll see we kind of streamlined things here. The, the task top sync in the federal hosting um, it was removed and we're actually repurposing that for other syncs that Fabio will get into next. Um, 
But I think one of the coolest things after a year of kind of improving the processes, we've improved like kind of the flow of data. We, like I mentioned with the attributes, um, we grossly improved in terms of the attributes that are on the defect and requirements. Um, it came apparent that they were only using HP really because um, the government was using HP and their primary tool downstream of HP was version one. So it was kind of, kind of cool, I don't know if I go back, but um, essentially version one was another tool that we weren't even aware of, the government wasn't even aware of, that they were then syncing with HP. So it was really cool once we started having these discussions, we were like, oh, well, we, we don't need this HP tool, you guys, you know, we can bring in you guys into the IBM suite um, and sync data. And so it was a really kind of cool shift in uh, um, how we went about this. Um, we did expand it to multiple different work item types, uh, including change requests. We got them uh, essentially uh, contributing to the same, same work item types there, executing their CCBs. Um, so essentially they, they would execute their CCBs and, and then uh, escalate it up to the government. Um, but I think the most important part of this is it drastically, it, it drastically improved the overall end-to-end -end processes between the government and vendors. Um, and really, in terms of lessons learned here, it wasn't until senior leadership on the government side really pushed down hard on the vendor and the, the teams involved in the defect teams and said, listen, you guys need to collaborate. You guys can't just be managing your own processes. There needs to be coordination between the two that we really saw success in this model. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, the, the overall duplication within the tool was reduced. Um, so in terms of overall LOE, in terms of managing multiple connections, uh, uh, just it removed a lot of heartache there. So next we'll get into what we have planned for our inter integration hub connection. All right, so, um, so with uh, TaskTop, uh, really what we ended up finding, and I think we heard a lot more detail about the value stream, we, I think we started to kind of put together our own tools um, and what we had within our program office. Um, the version one story, um, I think, was the key that kind of drove us down this path. Um, through connecting two tools to each other that weren't connected before, we found other tools that were enabling some other tools to, to kind of feed data in and, and support um, processes. Um, so on the left-hand side, we have our lifecycle management tools or, our, or your ALM tools. Um, so this is currently what's in, within kind of the, the purview of our program. Um, so you have the IBM Jazz tool, um, which we spoke about, version one, which we're connected to, um, Serena, RM, CM. Um, and then what you won't actually see here is HPALM, which we totally ended up just kind of doing without since we ended up moving all those folks into the IBM Jazz tool. So that was one of the cool um, things that TaskTop helped us with, which we didn't even know was, was going to be the result, was that it helped us with a migration of folks that had a lot of processes in a, in a separate tool, that they were doing their work there for, you know, for many years. Um, but by having the sync there and, show, and, and giving us time to actually align processes together to define what a defect was and making sure that we had everything they needed, um, it was an easy transition for them to just jump over to, HP, or to IBM Jazz uh, and no longer need those licenses for HP. Um, so that was one of the, the interesting things there was that the original sync it actually eliminated the, the other tool. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I should you know, the reason that this was critical is they had essentially thousands of developers on version one. Um, so they went from essentially having a few key people on HP that was just kind of duplicating work to connecting directly with their development team, which had thousands of people. Um, so it was a really cool thing to be able to make that direct connection. Sorry, go ahead. Um, yeah, so, so with, um, with um, the ALM tools, um, so these, these are all kind of, again, these are the tools that we currently have. Um, so the thought is we'd probably continue on with, um, with the connection pieces. Um, in the middle, top middle, um, you have your IT service management tools. Um, so we have Zendesk. Um, we have two instances of BMC Remedy. Um, so that's similar to kind of ServiceNow where you have um, a lot of folks um, kind of, you can have them as a help desk. Um, but really where what we call incidents come in um, from um, the field. Um, based on the product. Um, and so again, we do have overlap there, so we have opportunity there to, um, to either connect those um, or potentially um, consolidate as well. Um, one thing that I'll mention before I get um, too far into this is there are different owners of each of these tools. Um, so if I go back to the ALM tools, the IBM tool is owned by the government, version one is owned by our vendor, um, and then Serena is owned by a partner government entity. Um, so 
a lot of times um, we we have to act, we, we need a tool like TaskTop to connect um, because we can't just simply uh, consolidate all tools. Um, there's budgeting. There's a lot of political um, things behind that, um, and so a, a consolidation immediately doesn't always make sense. So that's why you'll see some duplication here. Um, then if we move over, we have a portfolio management tool in CA Clarity where we handle um, you know, the int int intakes of personnel and management of, of personnel. Um, and then at the bottom, um, we have uh, code, uh, code uh, analysis tools like AppDynamics, HP Fortify. Um, in the middle, the performance monitoring, SonarCube, CA APM. And then we have a test automation tool of, uh, H of HP UFT. Um, we also have an IBM um, version of that as well that, that's not on here. Um, but as you can see, there are a lot of tools here um, that are kind of within our scope. Um, and so if you go to the next slide. Um, so this is sort of the, the opportunity that we have, or the playbook, um, the options that we have to connect through. Um, so uh, the thought is we'll use Integration Hub to sync um, you know, those tools around Integration Hub um, together. What you notice is that the rational tool is no longer in the middle. Um, so kind of um, looking at um, what I think it's Mark Ford stated before, um, we'll be using uh, potentially those models for, re for either requirements or defects to connect things across through Integration Hub um, and not really be um, tied down to a single tool, um, but actually have things connected via Integration Hub. Um, what you'll notice also is for the government BMC remedy and the vendor BMC remedy, um, there's an external connection point there that is not using TaskTop, um, but um, we did want to we did want to capture that. So that is um, another piece that we you know is kind of interesting. Um, that's there again another redundancy, um, but the redundancy in this case does make sense. Um, and then um, so in the middle here you have the gateway integration. Um, so there are other tools on the right hand side um, that kind of supplement um, some of the tools on the left hand side um, for more specific um, uh, capabilities. So um, for example, for your code analysis, if there's a discrepancy in your code that gets pulled through AppDynamics, um, through the gateway integration, you'd be able to create, say, a defect in your, um, in your tools. And so that mapping still on, on the, the right-hand side, actually on the left-hand side, hasn't been mapped out yet of which tool things would go to. But you know, the end result would be a defect in, in one of these tools where it would be managed. Same thing for performance management or, or the test automation tool. Um, so this is kind of the the playbook that we have. We haven't connected the dots yet to see how we want to, um, to manage these. I think we still need to do a little bit of work on um, you know, the value stream and figuring out where those connections are. But right now, this is sort of what we have um, for the tools that um, our program uses. Um, and then the last bullet here is for enter enterprise data stream. Um, so actually, if you go to the next slide. Um, so the third piece of, um, or I guess separate from Integration Hub, but kind of a, an add-on, is enterpri Enterprise Data Stream. Um, so um, the individual tools, like IBM Jazz or BMC Remedy, um, they have reporting, but uh, the, the reporting that our, our client um, or the government has requested is not always fulfilled by the reporting that are in these tools. Um, so the thought here is we would feed through Data Stream um, with the data that we'd like to have reports on into uh, the TaskTop data stream database. Um, and of course, there'll have to be some um, data manipulation, making sure that um, you know, we're pulling the right data, the, the right connections are made between the items. But at the end of the day, um, our plan is to use a business intelligence tool, such as either Tableau or Click, um, to then report out um, these integrated reports um, that our clients are requesting. So now we'll get into a few lessons learned, and we kind of already touched on a few of these things. Um, so we'll just kind of go through it. I think we have a couple more minutes. Um, so uh, first one, uh, start simple. Um, this may seem obvious, um, but for us, it was paramount to show the value of TaskTop as quick as we could, um, because it was you know clients didn't really know what was, this was. Um, it also uh, Quickly, we could quickly realize kind of what we was capable with the tool in our environment and what were the potential limitations. I know uh, when uh, for TaskTop first came in, 
a lot of clients were like, oh, this is going to solve all of our integration problems. And we're a little very bullish about you know, what it could achieve. Um, so we kind of had to you know, tamper back those expectations um, to what could be achievable in task stop sync. And we'll do the same with an integration hub. But getting that quick win, uh, getting it set up in a sandbox, and then doing some sort of small synchronization in a production environment, I think is critical to overall success um, before you kind of dive into the larger. And I, we didn't really cover this, but in some of those diagrams I was showing, we started with just kind of initial requirements flows back and forth. It wasn't until later that we did kind of the full end-to-end -end, uh, synchronization. Um, also, it might seem obvious, but having a tool POC like Fabio and I mentioned, uh, we are not owners of all these tools. We are the primary owner of, of IBM Jazz and Tastop, but we do not provide, a, you know, we don't administrate the others. So having a primary tool POC for each of those connection points is critical. Um, we can't tell you how many times right after we got the sync established with the vendor tool, we would have, you know, planned downtime in the weekend, didn't necessarily inform uh, the vendor's uh, tool POC, and sure enough, after a thousand error messages, he'd, he'd ping us and be like, hey guys, what's going on here? Um, so, definitely critical downtime, configuration changes, we would make a change to, say, the defect work item, we'd add an attribute um, and change the trigger and not necessarily inform the team on the other side, and if they didn't have that mapping, um, it would cause uh, some serious concerns. Um, so just having that open flow of communication uh, between uh, your, your, the team administering task top and kind of the endpoints um, is really important. Yep, and then um, at the top here we have process and configuration. So we did talk a little bit about process, um, but so with TaskTop there are a lot of things you can configure, whether it's the direction of your sync, you know, which items are going to be flowing, and who has ownership, which tool has ownership of that um, item. Is it one-way synchronization? Is it a two-way synchronization? Is it just half the items? Um, so understanding the process first is uh, super important. Um, because you definitely want to know that. Um, and th that could take a, take a little bit of time. That's probably where we spent most of our time, was up front trying to figure out those process needs. And a lot of times we would go to these, uh, to these teams, and a lot of times they'd be discussing who owns what attributes within those meetings. Uh, so it was, you know, we, we kind of ended up acting a lot more like facilitators than um, the, the end um, result of requirements to, to integrate our system. Um, there are also trigger points that are configured within the tool. So depending on certain um, you know, constraints, certain items could flow from, from one tool to the other. So understanding that as well is important. Um, for example, um, only items that were in a certain status, so maybe a you know, defect came in, it was looked at by the team, and only after a board had looked at them should it actually go to uh, the, the next tool. Um, so understanding those sinks or those points and those trigger points um, is also important. Understanding if you should bring over attachments. Um, you, know, you can set a lot of rules within the tool. Um, so there's, there's a good amount of, of homework you need to do beforehand uh, just to make sure that you, know, you have a clean slate there. Um, I'll actually jump down from process and configuration to training and documentation um, since we kind of spoke about the trigger points. So um, training, training the users that are creating the items or viewing the items um, is critical. Um, a lot of times, uh, or I can't tell you how many times I've got, I got an email or a call saying, hey, I didn't see this item sync over into this other tool. Um, and so then I would point them to documentation of these are the trigger points. You know, these three things need to be met per your process in order for it to get passed on to the government or for the government to pass it on to the vendors. Um, so training uh, your users and making sure you have documentation to point them to, kind of obvious, but um, is important as well. Documented in which attributes match the other attributes um, is important. Um, so I'll move up to cyber um, requirements. So for us, this was probably the one that took, has taken the longest time. Um, since we are in the federal space, um, there are a lot of cybersecurity concerns, and um, different programs are in different are behind different networks and firewalls. Um, and so TaskTop, anytime it connects to a system, uses basic you know username and password credentials, um, and so. These, these networks that you're connecting to don't always, or these systems don't always just need a username and password. They might need a government ID um, you know, to, to authenticate through. Um, and so uh, you need to make sure that when you're connecting your systems, you're, you're thinking about those things. Because you know, within the government space, it's not always um, you know, that quick to, to get installed. Um, from a TASA perspective, as Kyle mentioned, it's ready to go. You, know, you, you type in a username and password, you, get, you can hit, if you can hit the 
the um, systems. You can sync within a day. Um, but actually getting approvals to connect different systems to each other, um, depending on what security level they're at. You know, if one system's at a high security level and you're at a lower security level, that can be an issue. Um, so bringing that other system up to that higher security level um, can take a lot of time. Um, and that's really where, where we kind of hit the most time spent on our side. Um, and then moving down to um, se uh, sensitive data precautions. So this is just a reminder that if you are dealing with sensitive data, um, you know, to, take, to, to make sure that you're thoughtfully connecting things um, in the right way. Um, so if you don't want some information to flow from one system to the next, um, you, know, you can handle that within permissions in those, in those separate tools, not even having to do with TaskTop, but always considering protecting and safeguarding the, the sensitive data um, you know, because TaskUp will do whatever you tell it to do. If you tell it to send all information from one tool to the other, it'll do it if it has access to it. Um, but you can, you can um, prevent that or prevent data that you don't want to be shared um, by user permissions into separate tools. Cool. So that's all we had. We're more than happy to think we're out of time. But uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out. Yep. Oh, and I'll also point out uh, we have some team members here. I think Zach just stepped out. My co-lead, Zach Williams, is here as well. Um, so we have multiple team members you can reach out to. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Zach. Yeah, it is just amazing to me that you can actually get to that kind of flow and visibility in, in the environment that you work in. So that's, that's tremendous. Uh, before we break, Wes is going to give out another partner award. So. Okay, do they have this mic on this time? All right, great. Um, so I'd like to present our next partner award. This is a partner who is achieving a very high rate of growth, and we are also pretty thrilled about the ways in which our partnership with them are, is also growing. So the award goes to Tricentis, and I'd like to invite Mike Butram up to receive the award.